Hi, I'm Glenn Orpheus, and this is my review of a Cyrusher 2020 XF900 fat tyre e-bike. So without further ado, let's take a look at the bike's features. First off, we have these huge 26 inch by 4 inch wide fat tyres that make the bike so versatile and a pleasure to ride on many surfaces, even across sand and even snow. Then, moving from front to back, we see the front LED light with its integrated horn, capable of producing up to 6,500 lumens, which is powered by the main battery. Next, we see the unmissable motorcycle-style suspension forks that have 110 millimeters of travel. On the main stem of the bike, we can see the 48 volt, 17 amp hour battery, which has a USB port for charging other devices. It's fully removable and has an on off switch, a power indicator, and is housed in a waterproof case. It also has a key to lock the battery to the bike or unlock it if you wish to remove it. Sitting just above the battery, you can see the rear spring suspension rated for up to 750 pounds and has a 20 mm deformation to help with a much smoother ride over bumpy terrain. Moving around the back, you can clearly see the now dual suspension seat for that extra needed comfort. The motor on the back wheel is a Bafang 750 watts, 80 newton meters of torque and has a max power output of 1500 watts. All in all, this makes light of steep hills and it's quick to accelerate, say at traffic lights. The derailleur is the Shimano Tawny 7-speed PDTY300, connected in turn to a Shimano 7-speed freewheel. At the centre of the bike, we can see the new Pro Wheel crank set with dual-sided bash guards. You'll also notice the wire underneath going into the frame to where the hidden controller can be found. Moving around to the back left, we can see the new 180mm hydraulic disc braking system and also the included aluminum kickstand and the same hydraulic disc brake system on the front wheel. The wiring on the bike is quite tidy considering, with the most wires visible being at the front, with several of the cables hidden throughout the bike's frame. On the right of the handlebar, you can see the half twist throttle. Just behind this, you have the rear hydraulic brake lever. Then in front of this, we have one of two Shimano 21 speed shift levers with visual aids. In the very center, we have an advanced 3.7 inch bike computer for speed, battery charge, distance, power usage, and more. On the left side, we can see the front hydraulic brake lever and the second Shimano shift levers, again with a visual display. Then, between that and the left handle, we have the bike computer's operational buttons, which are used for turning on the bike, selecting power assist modes, turning on your lights, which also lights up the bike computer, and putting the bike into cruise mode, which just turns the motor to around six miles per hour which is stopped the moment you touch the brakes. So basically, power is cut to the motor when you touch your brakes in any mode for extra safety. The XF900's bike frame is made from 6061 high strength aluminum. It's got great art design and water bottle support on the top stem. The bike comes in three different color choices, blue and black as seen here, white and black, or yellow and black and it's suitable for riders with a height of between 5 foot 5 inches and 6 foot 6 inches. So what are my thoughts on the new Cyrusher XF900 fat tire e-bike? Well before that let's just do a quick throttle only test. From standstill just the thing zero on the clock off we go twenty miles per hour twenty three twenty five twenty nine point 
0.75.8 and it is a little bit windy today. So moving on to my thoughts about the bike. Well, the bike came well boxed and was really easy to assemble. It also comes with the usual accessory pack, assembly instructions, a small pump with a PSI readout, a combination lock, a small tool set to assemble and carry out maintenance on the bike. And lastly, in the pack, you have the included front and rear fenders. Moving on, the bike's computer is more than adequate. It displays battery life, pedal assist mode from zero to five, a odometer, a speedometer, a voltage meter, and a motor temperature, as well as error codes. And this can all be controlled from the three buttons on the left handlebar, all within easy reach. It's also possible, if you so wish, to set a maximum speed of the motor if you want to ride at a slower speed. The cruise function is also a great little addition this time. This spins the motor at around six miles per hour by default. However, it is possible to set this lower or higher to suit. Cruise function will remain constant unless you pedal or you touch the brakes, with the latter cutting the power to the motor completely. Talking about the motor, Wow, what a difference this makes. With its 80 newton meters of torque, I found even steep hills a breeze. And pulling away at traffic lights and keeping up with the flow of the traffic goes to make a safer ride. The 17 amp hour battery is also great. I got just shy of 50 miles on a single charge on pedal assist one and around 25 miles on pedal assist five. The bike is great for riding on various terrains, from roads to parks to woodland trails. If you let out the air pressure on each tire to about five pounds per square inch, it's even good to ride on soft sand. Also, you won't need to worry about the bike getting wet as the motor and the battery are both water resistant. However, don't go submerging anything though, as they're not waterproof. So let's move on to the pros and cons of the bike. On the pro side, we've got 21 speed gears, a 750 stroke 1500 watt back bang motor, hydraulic disc brakes with power off to the motor when engaged, bright LED front lights, easy to see bike computer readout, cruise function, USB charging port, dual suspension, four inch fat tires for multiple terrains, good cable management, great customer support and user group, motorcycle style front forks, come on, they look lovely. So moving on to the cons, no integrated back light. The bike is quite heavy, but it is easier to ride now without power due to the 21 speed gears. I know that seems like a short cons list, but for the money, I feel like it's worth every penny. Well, that just leaves me to say thanks for watching. And if you found this video useful, then why not consider subscribing to the channel? Also, don't forget our Facebook owners group, which was created by users, for owners, or even those interested in owning one. So until the next time, bye bye